boxing, when you do work out, especially boxing and, and my martial art, you sleep like a baby. Fresh mind, man. When you finish working out, you sleep good, feel good, feel good. The greatest feeling in the world, especially when you do boxing. You don't know if you're going to win or lose, but you're going there to win. That's how I feel. I'm going to hit you harder. You punch me, I'm going to punch you harder. <laughs> boxing kept me grounded, yeah. is what I'm saying. Again. I don't have no problems with anybody. But if anybody have any problems with me, we can dump it out at any time. Step in the ring, see what you got. <laughs>
every year I used to go back home just to do those those shows, man. It was it was nice, bro. I mean, I used to call uh, the Papito game, which they used to call me Papito. That's my mean my name, Papito. It was a part of like a whole sporting event. But they were I took a marathon. Where there's a marathon. Playing dominoes. There's volleyball. Playing basketball. And there's boxing. Back in 1986, I met the Molly Marquis, and then uh, she was praying about my first son, Jonathan. I got my son, be more trouble. My kid, they live like a rich man, a rich boy back then. I was, I, I was working two, three years in boxing. My dad was a professional boxer, and my dad used to have also a job, and he would also box. And besides boxing, also after he was done training, he would actually he would, uh, do maintenance to the gym, like clean up, mop, you know, for his membership fee. You know, so to give my son shade, running in the morning, getting the gym in the afternoon, sparring three, four times a week. I turned professional back in 1988. I was boxing back home, but, I, you know, I got into boxing here in the United States. The guy named Pepe Correa, the guy used to train Shira Relena. And Simon Brown, Maurice Blacker, we were champions, I used to train with them. So I used to train with their Latin Connection down Columbia Road. So I used to catch the two buses to go, just to go train. I know everybody knows William Joppy, world champion. I teach, I teach William Joppy Willa Jop how to fight. He became world champion. We used to put the gloves on here all the time. You know, I bloody up each other as father and son. You know, so we had, I remember back there in that court, we'd have sparring matches. We'd have sparring matches here on the street. It's a lot to say, it's a lot, it's too much to say, but, but I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the most happy man in the world. My kids, I got grandkids, I got, I love what I do, heating air condition. <laughs> I love kind of boxing. Hey. Uh, I moved to Miami uh, at seventh grade, so I was 11 years old. Going, like, just starting seventh grade, my father and my mother, they split. My younger brother, Rigo, he stayed here at the, with my dad, and I moved to Miami with my mother. Moved to Miami, played soccer, a couple teams, and then I kind of met a different crowd of kids over there in Miami. It's such a different, it's a big change. So they were break dancers, and uh, a lot of them was also from the same kind of situation at home, single parent home. So, you know, we'd hang out, we'd break dance, and they introduced me to other people. So um, it wasn't really till I was about 13 years old is when I took the boxing more serious. And um, I started actually going to the gym and I would actually take the bus, public transportation from Miami Beach to, uh, to the city, Liberty City. And I train at a gym called Showtime Boxing Gym. So I kind of bounced around until I found home. You know, as a fighter, you kind of bounce around until you find like a gym where you feel like, man, this is family. The gym I was at, it was more like, uh, they weren't really into the amateur circuit. Uh, it was more pros. So I got a lot of gym wars, a lot of good rounds in with a lot of good pros. Even at a young age, 15, 16, I'd be in there with 28-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 30-year-old men. And I got a lot of experience in the, in the gym. Growing up, my brother's name was Suavecito. Suavecito. I don't know if you guys know what that means in Spanish. It means smooth, like Suavecito, smooth, because he was just too smooth. Like, you wasn't touching him. I was really an athlete. I was like, I took it serious. Like, you could wash clothes on my abs. I used to do 300 sit-ups a day, my friend. Like. Hardcore. He's a southpaw. He has a lot of aggression, you know, and he's southpaw, which is very hard to beat. So in Miami, there's a lot of gang culture, okay? There's a lot of little cliques, a lot of little different neighborhoods. So we get into fights and stuff like that. So just to paint the picture as to why I wanted to move, because 
at the time, you know, the, the, the route my friends were taking, it just didn't resonate really with, with me that, you know, I'm not, I wasn't, you know, I'm just, a, I was, I'm always a quiet kid, smart, but, you know, maybe to hang around with the right people at the time. But, you know, to this day, those are my brothers, though. So we formed a lifelong friendship there. I love Miami. It's, it was fun. Um, my mother, I love her dearly, too. She did what she could, you know. But, you know, we, I just moved here in 2005 to pursue different things. My mother had always, like, put real estate ideas in me, right? Because she used to work at a brokerage in Miami, so I was exposed a little bit to that world. So at 19, when I was working at Comcast, I started binge-watching Flip This House. And then I ordered one of these books, late night infomercial. That gave me the inspiration to start pursuing real estate. So I, I took a break from boxing all those years after my graduation to 2008. And then, you know, my brother's here, my brother's a boxer too. So what we would do, we would meet each other at the gym. Me and my brother were actually training real hard to go professional athlete boxers. Growing up in the gym, we always had this brother thing. You know what I mean? Like you see now in boxing, there's, this, there's, a, there's a brother connection you have these brothers that come up in the professional athlete level now and they're like, they get this fame. So Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, I would leave the uh, leasing office, which was located right near the gym. I, I used to train at Sugar Ray Leonard Boxing Gym. And I would go and meet my brother there. You know, I'd take off my tie in the bathroom, my shirt, boom, get, get, get ready um, to, to work out. And I think that that was a time in our life that we felt really good about that, like about what we were doing. You know, we, that was the first time we felt good about something. Like, you know, like he was learning real estate, going for his exam, going for his course, also working at a management company, uh, leasing apartments. So he had an idea of management of, of, of a property. I'm so proud of my kid, Jonathan is great. Jonathan was a great fighter, man. In 2008, at the end of it, like December or so, I get home after in the morning, I had my little tax money. I was shopping for a car. A buddy of mine used to rent a room in the basement, so I was with him. He, was, he took me to look for a car, and then he took me to an interview with a broker. The broker, that it, it, he was actually gonna take me under his wing, gonna teach me uh, real estate investing as well. It was kind of aligned with everything I was like looking for, right? Um, I, I met with him in the morning. I looked for a car that morning as well. I get home that day, and when I go to, you know, knock the door of my house and open the door, um, a guy that used to live in my house the summer before um, opened the door. And I'm like, what is this guy doing here? It's strange. So apparently the guy had came down from New York and he came to my house uh, and he's looking for like uh, a connection to purchase ecstasy pills. So he's like, looking for a plug, he comes to my house to look for a plug. You know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm right. I, I had a freaking awesome day. I, I passed my class, like, I was gonna plan for my PSI exam Tuesday, you know, it was Monday, so I, I already had it scheduled. So my thought was, man, I'm getting home to study. And uh, I remember having that conversation upstairs. It was just me and him. And my mind was strictly on, like, what I wanted to pursue. Like, it wasn't even on, I was like, nah, I'm good. I, I had, I had bigger dreams than that, right? The buddy of mine that rented the room in the basement, I guess this guy says that, yeah, I could serve him up. Yeah, I could get him the pills, you know? So I'm studying and my room door is open. Then he comes in and he sits with me. I have my book open, my real estate PSI, my, my, my real estate course book open. And then he sits next to me, but he looks a little strange. And then I look over to him and I ask him, I said, oh, you know about these pills? And uh, he tells me, he, he doesn't even look at me. He's like doing this. And he says, yeah, yeah, my man's outside. And then like maybe a minute later, um, I felt someone else come in my room. And then I turned, I had the desk chair. I turned in my desk chair and then boom. I was like, I already had a guy like coming in my room, like with the gun pointed at me to my face. So at that moment, I'm here at my desk, that's the exit. He comes in and he, he like, you know, he comes in my bedroom and he, now he's standing there. So I'm facing him this way with the exit this way. Like, I think I stood up and I said, don't shoot. And all he would say was like, where it at, cuz, where it at? Like he said it like three times, where it at, cuz. Like, I'm like in my PJs, freaking last thing I'm expecting 
is to get a gun in my face in my bedroom, right? So um, I stand up in my chair and I put my hands up and I'm just staring at the barrel of, I'm staring down the barrel of a gun, you know, and someone with that, with that doesn't even have a face mask on. And I just try to turn and run. So I took a couple steps, maybe like two or three steps, one, two, and he shot me. And the bullet went through my shoulder because he shot me sideways. So the bullet also uh, fragmented because it was a hollow point and the larger fragment and a little smaller piece, you know, it affected my spine, it hit my spinal cord. Um, and the back, my spinous processes, like the back of the, bo the bone of the vertebrae um, at T2. So as soon as I dropped, like basically it was like an electric shock. My whole body was like in shock. And I'm laying on the ground Half of my body's in the uh, hallway, and then the other half is in uh, in the bedroom still. And I end up facing the stairs, right? So I get shot, boom, I'm on the ground. And then before the dude leaves my room, he tries to shoot me in the head. But the gun jammed. The gun jammed, dude. And um, I just remember laying there, and I, I yelled with the second shot, like as if it came out. Like, I, I yelled, you know? And he ran up the stairs, and then the other dude that was in the room stepped over me and ran out the basement door. So the shooter, he ran up the same way he came in. And as he opened the basement door to leave, my grandmother was opening the door. So I could see my grandmother at the top, you know? You know, thank God nothing happened to her, and he didn't shoot or anything. You know, he just ran out, but I could just see her, like, panicking, you know, yelling, screaming, running back and forth. So my thoughts at that moment, I'm laying on the ground. I didn't lose consciousness. All I could think was all my plans for that week. Like, I had met with my broker that I was going to, you know, uh, the boxing thing going on. Like, And then I just laid there thinking, like, how the heck, like, in shock like that, I'm even shocked because... I was trying to do all the right things, you know what I'm saying? And um, and I remember laying there and I couldn't even raise my arm. I couldn't, at that moment, I couldn't even move anything. And I was actually yelling out that I didn't want to die. Like, I don't want to die. And I, w and I was just like focusing on my breathing. You know, to try not to panic and stuff. And the dude that rented the room in the basement, my boy at the time, he's the one that came down the stairs and he called the you know, ambulance and stuff. And I remember them being on the phone and I was just like, just trying to focus on my breathing because the bullet impacted my, you know, my right lung collapsed. You know, my right lung collapsed because of the force of the bullet. The, 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 the shot, it was like the same distance you and I are at. You know, it was a close range situation. So I just remember laying there and then I remember the paramedics getting there. And then I, that's when my brother ended up getting there. I guess they saw the ambulance and stuff. And yeah, man, I remember them taking me and um, I remember them be, I being on the ambulance with the detective. But at that point I was like, going in and out, like being, I was feeling like, like, you know, like blacking out a little bit, you know, feeling weak at that time. And then um, I remember being in the hospital and I had fragments that came out of my neck. So from the point of impact, which is the shoulder, it went through my scapula and it hit my spinous process, but it also fragmented. And I have fragments that, I still have a fragment here in my neck which I'm like, wow, from here to here, I had to travel all this in here, and luckily I didn't get hit an artery or some crazy stuff. That's what happened, man. My brother's life changed so quick. Wow, it's just hard to even just think about it, talking about it now, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking about all of that. Look at my son, bro. My son's in the wheelchair for somebody that shot. Come on, my son couldn't be dead now.
Obviously, I'm waking up now with tubes in my mouth. I had a tube in my mouth, had a neck brace on. Um, and, and you know, I'm waking up to a freaking nightmare. I'm like literally thinking this is a nightmare. Like, this is not real life. They had to remove the ventilator from my mouth and they had to give me a trach, right? So this was a whole nother traumatic experience for me as well because I woke up during the procedure. Like the anesthesia completely wore off. However, I could not open my eyes. I could not even let them know that I'm freaking feeling everything. So I had to feel them open me up and stitch me up and put that thing in there. And then waking up from that and I can't even explain what I went through because now I can't talk. You know, because when you have that, you can't speak. So I had to write everything out. And this is crazy, man, what I'm about to tell you. Dealing with a, uh, one of the techs in the hospital, in the ICU, I have a trach, so I can't speak. And at this point, they're like, you know, trying to get me see in seated positions and trying to, you know, put me in, in different chairs and stuff. I'm seated, and he comes and whispers in my ear and, uh, and tells me, like, just, like, basically just deal with it. There's nothing I could do now about it. Like, and then I just sat there and I just cried and cried and cried. And with my mom, I cried, you know? And he just came and whispered that and then he just left. Like, I don't know if he got off doing that or, which is just something else that, you know? So all these are just things that are mar like marking me, man. Like, it's just trauma, you know, going now dealing with having to use a catheter to urinate, you know? I can't urinate on my own. I'm paralyzed from my chest down. Uh, so it's not an indwelling catheter, but it's like, Every, it's like changing a filter. I got to freaking, so dealing with that. And I remember my first time me having to do that, I cried, you know? I live with pain 24 hours a day. I sit with you right now, giving you this interview, and I'm in pain. I have nerve pain throughout my body. Like, like from, if I could describe it, it's from my, like, here down. Like, like, you know when your foot falls asleep and you feel the pins and needles? That's what I feel all day long. But I mute it out. You know what I'm saying? It's just I don't focus on it. Um, so it's not it's not easy. Like every day is a battle for me. So that was real tough, man, to just that change. Just to just basically we have all this good stuff going for us, chasing a dream, chasing a career at a young age, and then, you know, boom, your life could change so quick. In the beginning it was very depressing because I would I would just sit and think of all the things I could no longer do. Like when you have that attitude when you're only thinking about you can't do or I can't dance anymore, I can't box anymore, I can't do all those things that I love, it kept me in a depressed state. So I just shifted my focus to what I could still do, and, you know, and like what's still possible, you know, and then that was a big help as well. Just having that change of mental attitude, man, to see the possibilities in life instead of the limitations. We got a... Uh... We got about 16 bouts scheduled and some more fighters on the way, so we may end up with like 18 today. Uh. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success has only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in so, check. So, as you can see, man, I, I, what I did was I just fused my passion with the message. I've always done, like, backyard boxing kind of thing, you know, with friends in the hood or whatever. I wanted to fuse it with a with a message though more than anything. I appreciate everyone coming out. This is this this was birthed by me um, and my and my team. I was a victim of gun violence in 2009, which left me paralyzed from my chest down. The goal is to separate ourselves from anyone else doing backyard boxing. There's a lot of other people doing this. We're not the only ones, but we need to really stay anchored to the message. Like we thump for a cause. And now we're bringing the community together to raise awareness on gun violence. And, um, and it's such a beautiful thing. We got people from all over the different areas of the DMV just coming and standing in solidarity against this, uh, all this gun violence that's happening. We want to share other people's stories and their experiences uh, and how they've been affected by gun violence and, and, and give them a stage and a platform for them to also, you know, you say why we need to end this, man. We need to, we need to put a stop. It's affecting too many lives. So, you know, I'm just fusing my, my, my life passion 
and in my story with a message. Let's give a round of applause to everyone that showed up to participate. It takes a lot of heart, courage to step in the ring. A lot of people talk, but not everyone steps in that ring. Where we're at today is such a blessing though. You know, I don't want a remorse because God is good. And regardless, my brother is alive, he's living, he's here to tell his testimony, and he's here to impact other lives. My son got shot. I said, you know what, we can, we can become something big in this thing. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of meaning out there. So, so you shot somebody, let's fight all the, now you can see all those kids that go over there in the ring. They take all the angry out of them. You can see, man, you can see all this angry they got. And when they finish, they go like, <laughs> I mean, this, bro, it's awesome. What we're doing now to combat gun violence is, especially after this pandemic has happened and corona hit and these kids have been locked up in the house for two years, kids coming out of high school with tons of energy that, you know, they're trying to figure out life and school was shut down. So their, their whole, you gotta remember, um, we're, we were raised on communication, on talking, and so these kids were isolated. People have been isolated for two years. How do they expect to go out to this world and really go out there and become their, themselves? And it's sad, and it's really sad. So we got to give these kids a platform. We got to give them a platform to get back to life, find themselves, create, recreate themselves. And then they'd be like, wow, and give them a mentorship. Say, hey, look, you know, this is the only way we can gravitate to these kids. Boom, boom, shoot. Boom, boom. Right I love it. We came here to thump, man. Soon as Jonathan said my name, Scrappy, get coming in the ring, that's when it hits. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I'm like, I bet. I'm ready. You feel me? Nice kid. Like, Strap is a nice, quiet kid. He's he seen quiet, but we step in the ring. <laughs> he's a different man. I grew up right here in Center Hill, right here in Wheaton. I lived there till I was six. Uh, that area over there was a little fucked up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of drug addicts, stuff going on down there. I wouldn't let nobody touch my brother when my dad would take us to go play soccer, when we go play around. Uh, my brother would get like, he would get into fights. I wouldn't let nobody touch my brother, so I would always get into fights. It would always be me and him getting into fights. I always get a black guy somehow, you know what I'm saying? Yanni, she's like my sister. We grew up with each other, you know what I'm saying? Been years, you know what I'm saying? But uh, she motivated me, you know what I'm saying, pretty much. She sees stuff that I don't see, you know what I'm saying, while I'm in the fight. So when she tells me, yo, Use your jabs, use your, use your uppercuts, because I'm not using them, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's open. Like, she would tell me stuff like that. Then when we're off the ring, she's like, bro, you're going to have to use your jabs. We're going to have to practice your jabs. So, look, we're going to practice the jabs, and we're going to practice more of your hooks. So, you know what I'm saying? So she pushed me through. So, yeah. Then I got my other friends, you know what I'm saying? They'll come, too. They would want to come spar with me, uh, uh, shadow box. Like, yo, it's like, we got to work on your footwork, bro. You feel me? So. When it's time for me to come train, we call this the scrap yard. You know what I'm saying? Cause I got bags and stuff right here. We be scrapping it, you know what I'm saying? Sparring and stuff like that. We all pretty much fought over here, the whole game. You know what I'm saying? That's all we did was fighting. Uh, we were thinking in our heads that we, we, to, we, we, would, we, we would train and we going to go fight. You know what I'm saying? That's what we thought in our head. We're afraid of. <laughs> Afraid of yeah, he, he, a big, he a big part of this pretty much. Cause he said he was, he, he's, a, he's a pro boxer. You know what I'm saying? He gave me this. He gave her Yanni yeah, this and gave me this with his stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, cause she'll tell her godfather that I'll be, I'll be back here fighting and shit. So he pretty much gave us this. We were young. As soon as that bell rings or, or somebody say fight, that's when everything goes away. You know what I'm saying? So I just start doing me. You know what I'm saying? Trying to perfect myself with some shit like that. This is what Jonathan is doing. He says, uh, guns down, gloves up. You know what I'm saying? I personally, I don't like guns, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather fight. That's who I am. I'd rather fight. So when he started promoting that, I was like, hey, but I'm going to do it for Blue. That's my man. I know somebody that got, that got shot. He got shot in the head, you know what I'm saying? Right out here, you know what I'm saying? That's somebody we was close to. He got killed. That shit hurt me the most, you know what I'm saying? I really treated him like he was like our little baby brother, you know what I'm saying? So when his life got taken away, that shit hurt me a lot. 
So well, this this actually made me came outside the house pretty much to go buy shit. He was 21, he just turned 21. So you feel me? And I was 21 at one time, you know what I'm saying? So he had a lot. He got a lot to live type shit. That's who I fight for, my man Blue. That's who we all fight for. We train, you know what I'm saying? We open the door, my man Blue right there watching. He right here with us. And he most definitely in the, in the ring with me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, I do get nervous, bro. I get real nervous as fuck when before I, I'm like, damn, people's watching me. I'm not used to this shit. You know what I'm saying? And people yelling and shit. I'm like, damn, I really can't see. I don't got glasses. I mean, I wear glasses, but when I when I fight, I don't got glasses on, so I can't see nobody. I hear a lot of people, yeah, uppercut, scrap people, use your jabs. You heard them with the jabs, blah, blah, blah. And you feel me? So I hear you. You know what I'm saying? So people hype me up. I want everyone to be better, or be a better version of themselves. So this is giving Scrappy an opportunity to be a better version of himself. He's training now. You know, it's giving him something to do with his time. So it's, 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 it's awesome, man. It's awesome. We, we know everybody. Yo, what's up from a long time ago? You know what I'm saying? That like, was good, bro. Like, you about to fight today? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, good luck. Like, you feel me? I never hear from somebody. I never hear somebody from outside from the circle say that. You know what I'm saying? Good luck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or after the fight, yo, you did a good job. People complimenting you and shit like that. Like, I never had that from somebody else but my circle. You know what I'm saying? Like, then that's all right. People like my fights. Man, Scrappy's been doing a hell of a job in there, man. Just to see him in there, mix it up, and show his heart and courage has been freaking exciting. He's brought a lot of excitement to the Thump Yard. Hey, Scrap. For the Thump Yard, of course, I'm the ref. My vision of the Thump Yard is to turn this into a nonprofit organization where we can hit the nail on the problems that's going on today in society. We want to reach out to the youth, especially the youth, and sort of like help them grow into real men and real women. I became a first responder because of an incident that happened in one of the buildings I was living in the district. At the time, um, a six-year-old got shot, you know, and I saw the diligence and care that the first responders provided him with, and it made me want to do that type of work. At the time of the incident, I was no more than 13 years old. We lost a lot of people growing up. You know, there's a lot of victims that feel like they have nothing left and gun violence is at its all-time high right now. There's gonna be a lot of people over there that like to use the guns and, and uh, uh, to come down to the situation, say, you know what? Let me see if you're a real man, step in the ring with me. Um, I know a lot of people hit me up and uh, thanking me, thanking us, the, the organization, for providing this platform for them to come and sort of like de-stress, you know? There's a lot of men out here, a lot of women too, who walk around with this built up stress, you know, with these mental battles, with these demons in their closet. And we give them an outlet, so. <laughs> Carlos, but I go by Los, you know what I'm saying? I've been going for that for. You know, it's something positive. It's, 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 it's a message that's getting sent out there, you know. If you like to box, you can box. 
You don't, you don't have to be professional. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be shy. Come out and box. Man, you know, I just did a little bit, right? And, you know, it was a decade I just did, you know what I mean? It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy, but at, at the same time, I couldn't make it hard upon myself or the, or the position I put myself in. This is, was one of my goals that I had, you know, to come back out here and box, you know what I mean? Because I used to box as a kid, not legitimately, but going around neighborhoods, parks, you know, uh, swimming pools, going out there having fun as a kid, going out there, you know, just boxing, throwing the gloves on with whoever. And uh, from, from me being, you know, locked down so much, it, I just only had memories that I can go back on and really enjoy those good times I had while I was going through a rough time that allowed me to escape myself from the position I placed myself in. Life, life is, is never meant to be easy, you know? So therefore we, we gotta fight through those obstacles and those boulders that get placed in front of us, you know? And uh, I'm a firm believer at that, that you can accomplish anything that you want and overcome anything that you want in life. And you can do whatever you want if you put your mind into it. I still haven't adapted to society so much yet because of the simple fact of the pandemic, you know? So now being able to come out here to the, to the thump yard, to be able to, you know, enjoy something that I always love to do, it brings joy to my life. And not having to be able to go back to them old neighborhoods I was hanging around and, and being able to come out here and, and stay positive with, within the turbulence of the times that's going on, you get what I'm saying? To those that's still out there, give, give them youngins a, 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 a better way, show them a better way. Because I was a youngin once myself, and I remember when I was out there acting wild, and I thought about all the things I've done in the past, and I said, man, only if I had the right guidance, the right person to lead me down the right way, I wouldn't have went through what I went through. Avoiding that drama that trauma for those youngest that's coming up. Because that, that's what they seeing. It's what the older heads doing. But guess what? They are guiding them the wrong way. Regardless of the fact of what you've done or what you're doing, you will still never want your son to do what you're doing wrongfully. That's not right. Because you wouldn't want better for him if you a real man. I might not have got shot. I might not have been the one that deceased, but I had people, the closest ones to me, that deceased. That, that are locked up behind, behind the prison walls for decades and decades and decades behind gun violence. You get what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like, it's just a movement just to let, 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 them, let them youngest know there's a better way out there to be able to sit here and settle your fights instead of going to them guns, because that sucker shit for real, man. That's law. It's the thump yard now. It's the thump yard. Even though I'm not might not be the one in that ring fighting that day, but don't don't get it twisted. I might be training in the cut, you know. But as well, I'm trying to inspire other young men to come out here and do what they don't think they can do. Come out here and do it, cause you can do it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, how y'all doing today? Good. So. Uh, let me tell you, five months ago, I was cooling, you know, then uh, I got shot. Five months ago, my boy, well, he used to be my boy, you know, took me out to Virginia for a party. And then coming out the party, um, I get hit. I don't know what happened, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm just coming out the party. I get stowed. And the second, like 30 seconds into the fight, I just hear a gunshot. And at the time, I did not know I got shot, you know. Like, I thought I just got hit hard or, like, he just knocked me out or something. I just felt my body hit the floor. All I could do, all I could hear is ringing in my, my, my nerves. They're like going everywhere. It was insane. And um, once I hit the floor, I like, I still turn around. And when I turn around, I just see all I could do, all I, all, all I see is someone's, um, someone's foot try to like stomp me out. They were stomping me out after I got shot. So all I could do is really just put my hands up while I'm trying to like stay calm. Cause you know, I just like, I'm losing blood. Um, when I got to the hospital, they had to stick some um, tubes in me. I got some scars right here because my lungs were getting filled up with, with blood. And um, yeah, they had to like cut me up. 
rebuild my whole spine. The bullet still in me is right here. It went up. The bullet traveled up because when I was I was throwing a, a punch, you know, I was dunking at the same time. So the bullet hit me from the back right here. It went back. It went up. It went through my lungs, my spine, and it just landed to be on my neck. You know, I've, I'm, I'm still I still haven't gone through that through that, that process of damn I'm in a chair. You know, like it's still like I, I can't believe that still. Like, you know, it's still like damn it's this dream, a bad trip or something. But over time, like. Having my daughter, like, I was in a wheelchair three months already, and then my daughter was born. At the time when I got shot, my baby mama, she was six months in. So, bro, like, that night, bro, like, like I thought I was about to die that night, bro, for and I was like, damn, I, I was even tripping about myself. I was tripping about my baby girl, like, damn, she's about to be raped for, like, no daddy and shit. Now I have a reason to keep pushing for it. Like, I always had a reason, of course, but... Now I really have a good reason to keep pushing for it because I don't want to leave like my daughter like you know starving like you know with someone I don't know just because I'm in a chair like regardless I'm in a chair oh well I got a man up still 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 be the man of the house still bring money to the house you know so like educate my daughter you know so I just got to put all that aside and really just focus on like you know my daughter and try and better myself you know when she's older the first thing I'm gonna put her in is boxing bro. Because boxing is not just about fighting either. There, there's, um, they teach you shit, like life shit, you know? Like not to give up, never give up. You know, when it, when it gets hard, like don't give up. I used to, I used to box. And you know, our, our routines will be hectic, bro. We'll run like four miles every day, work on core. And you always had that, damn, I need to, I just want to go home. But you know, like at the end of the day, you feel good. Like, you know, you're working your body out too, so. And you know you staying away from all the all the bad shit at the end of the day, cause you know you 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 spend you putting all your time into the gym, you know, box and trying to get trying to improve your work. So it's it's nice, bro. You're not gonna know you could do something till you do something, and then you say, wow, I didn't know how to do, I didn't know I know how to do this. I did not know that. But then you experience that and you love that and you move forward with, it. and then you find yourself a new path, a new way, a new door that opened up for you and just go straight through it and continue to keep going. I saw Scrappy, he posted the, the thump yard thing. And I was like, bro, you should tell him to put like people in wheelchairs in that joint. And then that's when I texted the thump yard. I was like, yo, you should just, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me get in there. Like put some people in chairs, bro. I'm trying to work out. He's like, all right, babe. He's like, yo, you know, I'm in a chair too. I was like, for real? I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I did not know that. I did not know he was in a chair. And like, you know, ever since that, I've been like, we're, we've been connecting. Like he's been like, he's been like, pushing me too because like you know like he's been in the chair longer than me and I feel like that's what I needed like find someone in the same position as me and just to like but in the longer in longer terms to see what like you know you can still be successful even in the chair you know so I, I think I needed that you know Like you said, there's an energy going on because, for one, that message I randomly get from Kevin, right, and he's seeking a mentor. He, this is a new world for him, right? I'm, I'm happy, like, the Thump Yard is his thing, you know, like, because that's bringing the whole community together, like, you know, like, fuck all that beef and shit, but at the end of the day, we all, we all trying to reach for the same shit, you know, try to get out, trying to get money, like. You're, you're just making it harder for yourself out there beefing with yourself, putting guns out, man. If you if you really got beef, bro, link up. Like, you know, like, work out, like, whatever. Like, if you get what, bro, take that out, bro. But, you know, you can come back another day, you know. I don't really know the totality of what is contributing to all of the gun violence, but we got to start at the root cause, which is his youth, you know what I mean? Because a lot of them are young kids. The guy that shot me, he was, like, 19 years old. Got a shot, Kevin was 17 years old.
to you can whoop them. Like, you know, they ain't scared of you. Oh, he got a gun. Nah, I'm scared of him because he can whoop my shit. <laughs> for this man is just to allow people out there in the DMV that if you have any problems any issues from both parties just set it right before it gets to them guns because when it gets to them guns it ain't no going back on them because now life get taken away now somebody get incarcerated now both mothers lose sons in the system and the same system that's not being broken up it's not being broken. That cycle, that cycle is not being broken. I mean, we put everything together, so you know, I know it's, I know it's gonna be bad. I can feel it. I can, feel, I can feel it, so let's do it. Because I wanted to grow where we give a spotlight to speakers at every single event so we can set the tone. Because we're, we're uniting people all over from DMV. You know, some guys in there are not, are not the nicest outside of there, you know what I mean? So, but thank God everything has been peaceful and everything's been remained respectful and I really that's the goal that is the ultimate goal and if we could congregate all these people at once and then they hear a positive message and then see people that's been impacted by gun violence if they're holding guns outside of this then they need to start you know living and choosing differently This is something that, again, I'm so thankful to have the relationship I also have at my age to be able to give this platform. This wouldn't be possible by myself or, by my, or even by myself, my brother on his own. You know, again, the, you know, the relationship that we've had and the people to open the doors for us to make this possible is also important too. So um, I give thanks to all, everybody for sure. Anything I've done, it's been with the team, man. So I have to really shout out to my brother, the ref, you know, everyone that's been a part of this movement, our media guy that's been handling a lot of our content, the filming of the fights, and just our brand in general, man. It's, it's you know, we're, we're do they all feel that we're doing this for a bigger cause as well. You know, we haven't made a dollar, you know, and, and it's cool. It's cool because it's for a bigger cause at the end of the day. So I have to really shout them out. I gotta shout them out, man, because I haven't been able to do anything by myself. You know, I mean, in, in terms of, it, it takes a team. You know, teamwork makes the dream work, you know? Right now, through the age, I said, you know what? I've done everything in my life. I've raised my kids, uh, they're doing good. You know, I love what I do. You know, what else? I can ask for life, man. Healing, we go back to healing, right? That's my form of healing, is being a give back and help find reason to me suffer for my suffering you know what I'm saying so that's kind of it right there you know I'm finding you know that's that's it's my, it's my purpose that's life who am I to come here and tell the next person what to do I can only encourage them I can only give them advice. I can only show them the way. Because I just came from that way. And that way wasn't the right way. So that's the goal, that's the ultimate goal, you know? And uh, at some point, make this into a nonprofit organization and start really collaborating with others in the community that's pushing, pushing the same message. You know, we wanna work with anyone, but as long as they align and resonate with the same message and really put that in front of any backyard boxing because it's bigger than backyard boxing. And as of right now, we're looking to probably start a youth camp next year around this time. I, I've been getting so much positive feedback from the community. The growth has been so organic. It's super organic. It's all like a community. It's all love, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a good vibe when you get in there. And when you leave out, you know what I'm saying? You feel good leaving out. Boxing is entertaining, right? So as long as we stay anchored to the message, we'll be able to keep sharing these stories with, with everyone that views these fights and, and that comes out to these events. I feel like Jonathan's the heartbeat of this organization. You know, um, of course, everything started with his incident. You know, Jonathan, before this, was a, an amazing boxer. And the fact that that incident took away those talents, you know, it's, um, it's sad to see that.
you know. The love has been just organic, and we thumping for a cause, for real, for real, man. We're trying to, you know, make a change and make an impact in the community, share a message uh, against gun violence. You know, I, I do real estate, and I've done business, and that, but I've never felt more fulfilled doing this work right now. Because I see the impact that it, it, it potentially could have and that it already has in short, in short time, you know? So it's really organic, man. And, and, and when I share my story, people see that I'm, I'm coming from a genuine place of wanting to impact other people. And it's just all these stories, man. And like where I got shot, if I would have got hit a little higher, it would have been a quad. I would have lost function in my fingers. So just like all these little things add up and show that I have to be more, just be grateful. It's just so many synchronicities happening, right? You know what I call them? I call them God's winks. Like he's winking, you know what I'm saying? Like a God, God's wink. This is a story about love. Stones and 
turn The more you live is the more you learn Your place may be locked up upon this land. Eh? 